first of us that we are going to cover for you today is kind of going to be more towards um, what are the basic necessities that we need to do and how do we go through uh, various sections that we can right moving on any information management starts with the enterprise's vision so larger the vision so larger is the information practice and the guidelines that we need to manage a vision that is set up with high bar makes us think more and also makes us more proud to say what's the vast that we need to manage with the vision that laid out by our beloved chairman i think the information security standards practiced is very very important and it is kind of very pertinent for the current age of threats that's going around from a given scope of presence of this enterprise we have about 71 plus hospitals all across the country many of them are qualified uh, with various accreditations and 4500 geographically spread pharmacies so with, with large volume of scope and coverage in terms of geography the heaviness in terms of how do you manage information security is also multifold and kind of creates its own complexities what do we do in a day at apollo is this you have 2000 22000 2200 admissions 30000 footfalls you have 3000 emergency cases close to about 30 to 35 cardiac surgeries a day and over 50000 laboratory tests why is this so important from an information security management this tells us the velocity and throughput of new information or the delta change that happens at a particular day and every day this keeps you know kind of growing so that kind of tells us how much impetus that we need to do from managing the information systems that is required because we all know data is the current oil that makes or breaks the money and economy what do you see now on the screens is the strategy that we kind of made ourselves for the digital strategy the experience of digital for various stakeholders for various excellence in our operations and what you see around each of these excellence is the various solutions that come across in the entire ecosystem as the number of solution increases the complexity so increases as well the duplicity of information increases the interaction of different systems increases so how do we kind of manage all of these from an information system governance what kind of basic principles and policies that we need to make is what is going to be covered in the next couple of slides for all of you to understand and go through it, it is important to understand there are certain solutions that are point in time specific for a particular function or it could be an enterprise level function which cuts across multiple functions and you know programs that is run in the enterprise so how do we kind of do a vertical solution or a horizontal solution or making it a point in time use solution is very 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 important for us to understand understanding the business function the need and the availability of it makes it more challenging for us to ensure the systems are always available for the business users when it comes to the right patient care delivery that we need to manage what do we do to make it a key for ourselves to understand is a set of processes that will go through any management that we say it's a set of processes that kind of chain the cross and kind of helps us to be sustainable in the long run right the first it starts with the vision that is well laid out a vision which is very clear helps to manage new strategies put the execution strategy and then establish relevant set of needs connecting your vision to a strategy and then establishing your need is that most important there is a huge distinguish between which is need and what is want every want is not a need and making a complex information security practice for every want will kind of be a hindrance to your daily operations so identifying the right needs and building coherent solutions around it is very 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 important for all of us next comes is the solutions by itself it's not that every solution is going to work in every enterprise a solution has to be usable and it has to be sustainable for a long term satisfying the needs that is established with the vision and the strategies if there is no connection between all of these we will have a daily change management problem to go through and when it comes to patient care delivery and information security controls patient care delivery will always takes priority than the controls that is required 
people always feel controls are constraints i would want you to all of you to think why is a brake most necessary in a car it gives you that agility and speed to move forward in as much speed as you want with the trust on the brake that you have similarly information security controls are also like brakes which will help you to propel yourself at a speed ensuring that these kind of standards are in place to ensure we follow right set of solutions and usability defining and executing governance is at most important too that's your next layer of maturity in terms of how do you define your need how do you govern yourself is the next step when you govern you will have to also monitor the usage of what it is being used for every single information simple rules like am i compliant to my own organization's policy protocols do i share my passwords do i log off my pcs simple basic hygiene are very very important we all heard right a small hole will let the entire army march in so every single small threat will allow a huge thing to happen so and with technology or within the digital world the volume to go through does not take a slower pace of time it just flows in when the gates are open so we have to be cognizant of the velocity and speed in which the data can be um, you know manipulated when you do continuous governance what do we do with those continuous governance is to kind of observe and learn and establish best practices which are repeatable and sustainable i think that's is the kind of process that i would want all of us to follow so that we are safe and secure and make available every information for an efficient patient care delivery moving on understanding the process what i would want to all of you to understand is it's not one layer as a software that's going to help or a computer that's going to help there are multiple layers of security when it comes to managing security at the very helm it's your processes and your policies that's going to help you govern how do you position yourself towards the information security then comes your physical infrastructure security then your surroundings like your perimeters how do you manage then your internal networks then the applications that you host and finally the data each of these layers have different solutions that you need to go through while well, you may not be visually seeing it in day in day out in every single day practice this is what an it um, you know ecosystem or an it engineer travels through across multiple networks to ensure that your data are safe and secure hence i would also request all of you to take your time to understand each of each of these layers each of these requirements and then help your it team to be more efficient and help you to help you do your job better a quick example of how we need to select a solution right our needs of selecting a right solution for information security is very very important we will have to spell out very clearly which layer of security that we are trying to deal with or which layer of protection that we are trying to deal with clarity around our own needs and the alternatives that is out that are available with us will help us to define and design a coherent solution for the entire ecosystem identifying each feature by feature or each solution by solution or components and making it a comprehensive solution offering is the key at this point in time with various sources and various channels of digital management that we have today be it your mobiles or a laptop or an ipad or a simple web or a public computer altogether or a simple bots or even a, you know a medical technology device everything transports data and data is information so how do we kind of create a solution that kind of comprehensively covers all of them is very important next comes when you have multiple solutions in the market which one to choose how do i educate myself to understand the intricacies of each of the solutions the positives and negatives of each of the solutions the advantages and disadvantages of each of the solutions that will only come when we well craft an evaluation across each of the solutions on what parameters would i evaluate how are those parameters helpful to my enterprise and my information security standard is something that we need to be aware and make those parameters in place comparing products is also of utmost importance we can't compare a large product to a small product obviously you can't compare banana and oranges together right something like that we need to be understanding of technologies and platforms at the similar level to ensure 
uh, we kind of manage the product product selection much much better identifying the right product along with the right partner makes the case we may have a right, best product in the in the market but if we don't have a partner to support it it may not be sustainable so the combination of right product and right partner and the right intent to use is going to help us make or break the case when it comes to information security and standards moving on when it comes to governance i would want to call like how all of you do in some cases hand washing has now become a hygiene governance is also a basic hygiene that we have to establish we will have to establish a set of metrics which we will monitor like peter drucker said what gets measured gets managed if you don't measure we don't improve and we all know in healthcare continuous improvement is the only way to sustain and grow this industry and hence establishing our own metrics and the frequency in which that we need to review reviewing daily sometimes may be right sometimes it may be hinder hindrance so how do we define which metric should be reviewed and what frequency has to be a right combination to make sure that the governance makes an effective change and sustainable change in the long run any information security practice is not an id practice it's an enterprise practice collaborating with right stakeholders is very very important because information is created at every second by every person understanding the various stakeholders in the ecosystem who are all primary creators of information and who are all primary consumers of information and where is the information available in various forms all these are important to understand and then make the right governance in place business participation is a must understanding data understanding information understanding the governance around it and the business participation is a very very must please do not let it to say that it's an it problem and it will have to handle it's not business is the owners of the data most of the patient data as the patient is owner many of the business data the owners are business it is just a custodian who is holding the data for you to make it available when it is in need of you hence participation is a must 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 the last point when it comes to governance that i would want to say is keep governance a repeatable process it has to be the way of life if we don't govern ourselves we tend to wander all over so governance is a must and we need to do the best thing to make is to make information security a priority for the board if a board demands the whole function comes and then falls at a right place at a right pace and at right hands so that's what i would want to all of you to understand that making governance as a basic hygiene is very important what do you see in the screen in terms of some of the pictures that i have placed is the way how we report information security to our board how do we measure our own maturity how do we set a target for our own selves what are all those different areas and sections that we kind of manage how do we compare uh, our presence with others or in the industry market with general published papers with various publication forums gives you a good amount of methodology to say yes are we at safe or are we at a place where we need to improve ourselves much better so those are something that i would want all of you to make sure to understand how we put governance in place and how do we monitor make a mark as a result of your governance identify the best practices and the benchmarks that we need to follow apollo in this case has chosen three independent standards to kind of combine together and then manage their daily life ISO 27001 for information security the national information security trust compliances and the hipaa from the international markets being a heavy in, number one healthcare provider in the country and also to many of the international uh, safe uh, you know patient cares we believe that we need to be at par at the international standards as well and hence relying on hipaa's um, controls becomes a daily way of our life though we are not certified in hipaa we make sure that we follow the industry's best practices there is a policy score that keeps measured every month to understand where do we stand in terms of our various processes this is not only in terms of controls it also in terms of our own policies and procedures that we follow this is one sample dashboard that i would want to kind of give which is based on a particular tool called safe kind of helps you understand at a very particular level of what is the authentication mechanisms that we do what's the kind of scheduled jobs that is running in where is the you know risk that we have in terms of 
low, medium, and high? And how do we need to prioritize ourselves to govern? Now, every single new PC that is coming into the system or every PC that is getting retired out of the system goes through this review of, is the data being safe? Has it been managed effectively? The access, et cetera, has been given correct. So all those are important for us to monitor. And there's a large dashboard that's available at the click of a button for us to understand and manage ourselves. Moving on, I want to say that we are certified on 27,001 standards since 2016. Um, and it's been a yearly exercise that we kind of make ourselves certified and ensure that we govern ourselves with the right set of external parties validation. With the various processes that Apollo has gone through so far, Apollo has achieved certain certifications for its, for its information security practices. Two of the key things that I would like to highlight is one, the ISO certification by itself and the Infram Level 6 certification that we recently achieved with HIMSS organization. HIMSS is the Hospital Information Management Society that manages various technology adoption in the industry and the maturity around it. So Infram is the infrastructure maturity model, which says how is it IT infrastructure is used and adopted by the healthcare business providers in their, in their daily life and how effective and robust it is when it comes to maturity practices. With that said, I would want to call upon a very important aspect when it comes to information security practices. Three important perspectives and attitudes that we need to develop. Self-discipline, in terms of we following our own policies, our own benchmarks, and make sure that we help our own team members and our own colleagues to follow it. Honesty when it comes to disclosure, when it comes to reporting, make sure every single incident is reported so that the right set of team helps you overcome all the hindrances that you have. And we will have to be transparent to understand what's going on within the information and within our networks. Making a culture, cultivating, nurturing, and growing this culture is going to make an organization a much, much, much rich and mostly available organization towards patient safety and healthcare. With this, I would like to hand it over back to Mr. Satish and all the best to all of you. So thank you very much, Ashokan sir. Indeed, it was a you know an eye opener, especially for me because I also follow ISO two seven zero zero one at Delhi, and I, I'm I'm sure the deliberation and your presentation would have been a great uh, sense of uh, information to all the participants. Uh, let me also uh, you know briefly. Uh, say a few points from your presentation, like your vision should match with our strategy, uh, right product, right solution with your solution grid was remarkable, multiple layers of information security management system. Then governance, which needs to be basic hygiene is, is something very great, uh, which needs to be supported for the sustenance in the long run and understanding your needs, your information, and your business combined with government's governance structure is something very, very pertinent. It should be made a way of life because in quality also we say quality is a journey and not a destination. So uh, we always promote continuous quality improvement like you quoted Peter Drucker, what gets major gets improved is, is. and last bit that Self-discipline, honesty, and transparency. I think that is the nucleus of ISO 27001, which says CIA, confidentiality, integrity, and availability of information and data. So thank you very much for your elaborative uh, and enhanced knowledge. So I'll just share my screen. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. So with this, uh, let me introduce with our second speaker for the day, Mr. Kumar Krishnamurthy, sir. Uh, welcome once again, sir. He is Vice President IT for Narayana Hirdale Group. He is also one of the founding board member for Chime India chapter. Uh, and, you know, when, when I was receiving uh, the CVs of Mr. Ashokan and Mr. Kumar Krishnamurthy, I I'm really, really falling short of words how to present your CV uh, to the audience. He is having 17 plus years of experience. 
is an active speaker lecturer in various business and digital transformation health it security and technology forums and you name anything he is there for the entire narayana hridaya group from strategic and tactical planning to development telemedicine radiology <laughs> clinical decision support identity management cloud computing mobile app analytics and also leads cyber security and software development uh, his academic credential include bachelor of engineering in electrical and electronics from university of madras executive education in general management from iim bangalore and he's also mphil in hospital and health system management from bits welcome once again sir i uh, request you to take all of us to the you know nitty gritty of analysis of information security and management system through your presentation and deliberations over to you sir thank you mr satish thanks everyone uh, uh, thanks colleagues for joining uh, let me uh, press in my screen okay uh, i hope my screen is visible um, if you can just give a thumbs up Please, yeah, uh, Ashokan, can you give it a thumbs yeah. Okay, fantastic. Can you make it uh, full screen, please? Yes, excellent. Thanks. So, uh, Ashokan, thank you so much for speaking on information security management. Talking, touch, you know, touching about you know uh, how to uh, you know select products. Talking about governance and the systems that you follow at Apollo Hospitals. So, friends, I think. Um, uh the one thing in information security and technology is uh you know there are there are a ton of jargons that is actually there so the given time of 20 minutes i'll try to focus and try to lucidly explain the role of information security risk management in healthcare but before that uh, my name is kumar and the group cif for narayana health we are headquartered in uh, bangalore uh, we have around 44 healthcare facilities in india uh, we also have an international uh, facility in cayman islands uh we have close to around uh, 6500 uh, beds um uh, and uh, we deal with 30 plus specialties and we have close to around 17000 plus uh, you know full time employees um so that said um let me go to my first slide um this is what um, your typical healthcare landscape basically looks like right what this graphic basically explains us is from the left that you actually see many of our healthcare providers are located across multiple parts of india uh, or they also have overseas business and so they have uh, multiple uh, you know facilities they have millions of patients that are actually there we deal with number of specialties associates which are who are employees as well as we also have people who are associates as you know working as contract right on contract is spread across multiple cities we you know both apollo narayana health we have nursing colleges we have clinical research team we deal tremendously with medical tourism and we have an ecosystem of um, you know health tech partners now day in and day out we have what is called you know we deal with uh, what is our bread and butter for our operations you know the health information system and what does it basically do right so or i would say rather than just looking at the health information system let us look this as an ecosystem which helps us to deliver patient care which helps us to uh, enable our doctors with the uh, doctors nursing and paramedical with the required insights um, and enable our uh, friends from the administration team to provide the required uh, uh data to help them make very informed decision on finance supply chain and uh, human resources and other areas so we deal with the number of systems the information management platform the chronic care management we have erps we have administration we have a video platform and a ton of apps that are actually surrounding and in this we do we do medical services we book appointments we do video consultations we give expert opinion for oncology and in all this what do we do we basically collect data we process data we share data um, maybe a data is actually older we sometimes archive the data right and all these are actually done by who by, by our doctors nursing paramedical support staff we have dnb students and uh, you know and vendors who are actually there right so and also patients you know they create data through the app that we actually have so this end to end operations need to run like a well oiled machine right and it is complex it has multiple moving parts in this and in terms of data that we collect i'm not going to go too much into this 
but I'll just give you some uh, essence of each of these layers. In terms of data that we collect, there are multiple touch points where we collect data. And uh, in healthcare, you know, uh, by La Pola and Narana Health has actually tremendously invested in technology and wherever possible we have invested in digital systems. We do collect a lot of data. We still have, uh, you know, many of the organizations still collect data, write data in some registers, right? We are, you know, especially in IP, we deal with a number of forms that are actually there, 60, 70 forms that are actually there, right? So these collection points, we call it registration, billing, admissions, clinics, contact centers, medical devices, are these areas where we basically collect data. And what do we basically collect in terms of, uh, you know, we collect historical data, the previous medical record history, we basically collect demographic data. Sometimes we authenticate we, you know, we, with the Aadhaar so that the demographic data is accurate. We deal with medical records, diagnostic reports, the CT, MRI, you know, all the radiology scans, fast treatments and all that stuff. And then we basically collect data from telemetry, from very various machines and, uh, you know, sensory. Let's say there is a patch that is actually in Narayana Health. We basically use a patch where to where we basically measure the, you know, the uh, the uh, the blood pressure. We basically do uh, the heartbeat and several other vital parameters that is actually there. Or there can be cardiac monitors, which basically all these data we then send it to a, you know, um, you know, a platform to enrich the data. And in terms of transactions, consultations are there, admissions, treatment, and a ton of things that we actually do. So in all this, there are, there are various actors or personas basically come together to deliver this, right? And such is the complexity of our landscape where there are, there are you know, multiple moving parts. And what we make as healthcare, uh, you know, what do you say? Uh, people, uh, you know, servicing the healthcare industry, uh, we deal with these complexities, but we ensure that we deliver that superior patient experience, superior doctor experience, right? Frictionless service, uh, you know, improved patient outcomes. And all these helps us to deliver uh, the, the outcomes that I basically talked about. Now, let me quickly give you a, another, um, you know, snapshot of what is happening. So Ashokan spoke about information security management. He talked about how measures, are, how products should be selected, how measurements should be done. Cybersecurity, you know, is, a, is, a, is now becoming a, you know, a very, very important area in our daily lives because as more systems basically, you know, go on to the digital platform, right? As we move from paper to digital systems, then the threat landscape or the landscape which you know the bad actors basically come and create havoc right uh, you know is, is you know is getting wider and wider and this we use a specific term called as incident right an incident uh, is something where something you know where let us say if if there is an operation data that is actually there if somebody goes past the security and enters the operation data that means that, that there is an incident there is a secure there is a security incident and if they commit something which jeopardizes patient security then it basically becomes a breach which means that not all incidents are breaches but all breaches are incidents right and today uh, what we see we see otp frauds we see system intrusions we see we hear these terms called as social engineering we call it phishing we call it bailing we call it spe there are a lot of these um, you know terms that are actually there and what this graphic basically tells this is from the verizon data breach report that is actually there the number of denial of service imagine something called as denial of services you have a website that is actually there let us say if the website is narayanahealth.org or if the website is apollohospitals.com if somebody basically uh, you know um, at it, let's say in a given minute there are some 20 million people trying to log in or let us say a bot basically emulates 20 million connections to our websites and load that website, what happens? Genuine patients don't get uh, access to the service that they require. That is called as denial of service, right? And basic attacks to basically steal information because today the healthcare data is valued at around 400 US dollars compared to a normal personal data. That is the value of personal health information. While 
many of these incidents, you know, we, we, you know, we see denial of service, basic web application attacks going up. We have social engineering attacks, number of breaches. These are system intrusions, which means that a malicious actor, a bad, uh, let's say in, in simple terms, a thief basically enters a system, intrudes your system, watches what the, he, you know, you actually transactions that you do or what data that you store, you know, that you basically store and steal the data. Now, this is becoming a social evil, right? You see OTP frauds, you have, you see frauds through Google Pay, you basically uh, say approval related frauds, a ton of them that are actually there. Somebody posing as uh, a higher authority and basically asking you to give gift cards and all that stuff, right? So as healthcare administrators, as, you know, as clinical staff, as nursing staff, we should be very aware about the nature of uh, you know cyber security the nature of cyber security threats in the current landscape what we follow in our work right we don't give out do we give out bank passwords do we basically we share uh, you know uh, you know information related to system login do we basically ask somebody else to basically place medication orders or diagnosis uh, diagnostic uh, you know tests no right so we have to ensure that whatever we follow from a personal standpoint, we ensure that we have to adhere in our work life also to prevent incidents, to prevent breaches. What makes us so special? I, well, well, I, you know, the first and second slide talked about, in, you know, uh, the landscape, then the incidents and the patterns. Why is healthcare special? The value of PHI is around 400 USD compared to a value of personal data. Personal data, I think it is valued around some $3 or something like that. Health is very specific to an individual. It is something personal to that individual. And when we take something called as confidentiality, integrity, and availability, right? Information should be available. When you, when you go to the Apollo website or when you go to the Narayana Health website, and when a patient queries a health record, the information should be retrievable at that point. So information is available. That is what he termed as availability to deliver that right care. The doctor should be able to retrieve your EMR record to provide that right care. Preserving the integrity of the data as well, which means that nobody should be able to modify the record without certain maker checker or certain approvals. This is called as integrity of the data. The last is basically confidentially, which means that only that doctor who is basically providing care, um, you know, or that referral consultant who is providing care for those patients should have access to that particular data, ensuring that data is viewed only by the right party. In our terms, it is called as confidentiality. And breach of health information can affect the whole country. We have seen in the recent attacks for a very prestigious institution that is actually there, millions of patients have been affected millions of uh, you know lot thousands of doctors have you know or clinical staff you know went undue pressure so a lot of mental stress because of all this right so breach of health information can affect the country because health is a state subject too you know what are the information dwells you know what do we deal with and i'm sure in all our emrs demographic you know we have seen all this demographic data diagnosis allergies, history of present illness, medications, and all these are the information jewels which the hacker, uh, you know, wants access to, right? And who are the interested parties in this, right? And we have a ton of, we work with an ecosystem of partners because we as healthcare providers form the first line of defense. So anything that happens to a patient, the first port of call is to the provider. Okay, from here only the payer, the biomedical company, the pharma company, life sciences, genetic companies, all these people basically come in, right? So, but who are the interested parties? Pharmacies, we have payers, we have diagnostic facilities, corporate hospitals, right? If you're a public hospital, you also network with corporate hospitals, political parties. If, you, if, they, if political parties or political systems get access of patient data, what do they do? They can write, break, and you know, you know, in the, uh, you know, I get, I don't want to give any political color to all this, uh, and uh, um, I just want to ensure that these are only my personal views. Again, so when I when political parties parties basically have access to these data, they ensure that you know they connect, uh, you know, conduct mega rallies for uh, you know health screening camps and all that, right? But 
uh, you have to ensure that there is the appropriate patient consent when they do all that. So business houses wanted the data. International agencies like WHO and other agencies would were you know uh, are the interested parties. And last but never the least, our hackers, right? You know these hackers who can be inside to the organization and also to be ex you know external to the organization, right? These are the interested parties. So these many people who are interested in our data, we need to ensure the right data is the is give, is shared to the right party not to the hacker right definitely not to the hacker but to those interested parties or who are our partners in this with ensuring that we get proper consent we ensure that we you know whatever data that we actually collect is the data that we you know that we would use for we need to ensure only the right amount of data is actually connect you know you you know collected we need to ensure that is accountability transparency, we need to ensure there is notice, and we need to ensure that only that right data set has to be offloaded to that party. That is very, very important, right? So I hope everyone understands because I have not used any jargon and these are all our day-to-day -day terms that we have actually used to ensure that it resonates with you. Now, there is this something called as emergency management. So we have you know all these codes, red, code red, code blue, and all that stuff that is actually there. So even in security terms, we have what is called as, you know, emergency management. How, when emergency strikes, right? How do we basically respond? So you prevent and mitigate, right? You have your risk assessment and this is where risk assessment basically comes. An organization understands if you are in an area which is, uh, let us say, heavily populated and uh, or b basically has a different community of people who are very, very, uh, you know, it is not a safe area, then there are specific risks involved in it from and for an organization standpoint. You understand what is the risk, right? And say, what is the risk for this part in the hospital at, you know, at this particular location, right? You see this from various lenses and then, then try to mitigate the risk. You try to, um, you know, eliminate the risk. You try to transfer the risk. So there are several, uh, you know, or you try to avoid the risk that is actually there, right? So in the cycle of emergency management, risk management is very important and there are four actions that you can take from a risk management standpoint. But if once you do your risk management, you ensure you prevent and mitigate the risk. And then you prepare, right? You know, even for all this, you plan, you do tabletop exercises, then you prepare for that. You basically have industry experts. We have our own peers, right? Ashokan is my peer. You know, there are several peers for me. So we basically understand, take some common lessons and ensure that there is domain awareness is there, industry awareness is there, and then information is there. Then we prepare that. And then we do our threat detection and crisis planning. In the event something goes wrong, how do we basically respond? How do we ensure that patient care is not affected? And then based on that, even when an impact occurs, then we need to know how to respond, coordination. Let's say a hospital basically, uh, you know, uh, you, you know, what do you say, Un, you know, uh, is affected by fire accident, right? What is the response coordination and consequence management, right? That's a breach uh, or that is a catastrophic issue that actually happened, right? If, if it happens, it's a catastrophic issue. So how do you coordinate? Similarly, in information security also, how do you coordinate? What is your response mechanism and what is the consequence? How, what, how do we communicate to the media? How do we communicate to our patients? And last but never the least, how do we first recover? And once you recover, you learn from your experience, you feed that information back into the loop, understand you know what do you say change your model and you know do your drills and improve further that is continuous improvement that we do that is the cycle of emergency management now last but not the least my last slide i hope i'm on time uh, approach to risk management these are like the uh, you know five pillars if i may put it that way on the governance piece which ashokan talked about Business security and strategy, we always have to be in line with the business. We have to go hand in hand with the business. Technology security cannot go in one direction. Business cannot go in another direction. That is very disjointed. So we have to be together, right? Empowered security function. Uh, businesses should empower security to take the right, apply the right controls, ensure that the right budgets are given, right teams are given, meaningful policies and procedures. Policies and procedures should not be at a, Think to uh, just to, you know, just for the sake of writing a policy procedure. Policy and procedure should reflect what is happening on the ground. Security and privacy awareness. And never ever we should copy paste 
security policies and procedures. So that is governance. And we talk, we spoke about risk management. Uh, we do our disaster recovery deals. We follow a number of compliances. We ensure that appropriate mitigation is done uh, to ensure we ensure that appropriate insurance covers are taken. Sometimes we basically accept the risk so that we are and we make our board aware on what these risks are. And from a program development standpoint, a well-defined program framework, a business case driven approach, an architecture led approach. So, you know, there are a number of toys available to, you know, to say that, you know, Ashokan talked about the product matrix and how to select products. So a number of toys are available. How do we make that right decision? So an architecture led, you know, uh, you know uh, decision making. And then a roadmap, uh, Rome was not built in a day, right? So we all know that. So security journey cannot be done, you know, in a single day and nobody has a magic wand over here, right? So this is a journey that we actually take. So to build even the base model or the base foundational platform, it can take even anywhere between 18 to 24 months. Then you monitor your environment and always recalibrate your strategy. And when an incident uh, occurs, you study the incident breach patterns. You have to be aware of what these incident breach patterns are. You need to know what is your situation management process with command center. You need to ensure what are the containment guidelines. What, how do you notify all stakeholders? And how do you ensure that the uh, business continuity is handled? And how do you resume services you know, and ensuring you know, after you address all your, you know, after you address the problem? And last but never the least, the last pillar is the by design approach. Anything that we do, we know we have to ensure that we bake in that element of security and privacy. Today, we have to understand that we as healthcare providers, we as uh, people from the healthcare industry, we are not the owner of the data. We are custodian of the data. We are the data principal. The patient is the owner of data. So, if somebody is basically giving us their data and say, please safeguard them, which means that they implicitly tell us that you bake in security and privacy at every single layer, right? Ensure that we have proper principles. When I said that use limitation, collection limitation, transparency, accountability, notice, consent are all the principles that we should follow, not in just paper but in our day-to-day -day actions. Follow unconventional, because you are now, follow unconventional approaches purely because it is not a regular thief, right? This thief is unknown, virtual, sits anywhere in the world, causes havoc. So for unconventional people, you need to have unconventional approach. And always in this journey, whatever you take, you have to ensure that there is a guide, right? Because when we go from point A to point B, what we do, we open our mobile phone, put Google Maps and basically say, Go to point B, right? Or go to the destination. So like that, we need a reference map to navigate. And then what we call as perimeter. In, you know, imagine our house is there. We put, a, uh, you know, we put uh, four walls around that. That becomes the boundary. And that is the perimeter, right? Now, in organization terms, now with all this digital health and all that stuff that we actually do, what happens? The hospital's walls are broken. When I say broken, it's not even literally, um, you know, our scope is completely expanded, right? Because we deal with patients right from the stage of wellness, now all the way to uh, in the hospital. And even if wellness leads to an illness, we then manage that condition, right? Connected health. And then shift from a traditional to a zero trust model, uh, which means that don't believe anything. In security, you never believe anything. You ensure that you take, you basically understand what the uh, use case is and ensure that you uh, approve only for what is really, really required so from the zero trust model. So that is in essence the role of information risk management in healthcare. I am hope that you would have, uh, you know, you would have there might be some key takeaways from that. Uh, I would be happy to answer your questions. Um, and uh, thank you so much for the opportunity provided. I really appreciate uh, the Apollo team and the Patient Safety Conference, and I wish them a grand success. Thank you. Over to you, Mr. Satish. Thank you, Mr. Kumar. Indeed, again, you know, you have spellbounded all of us. And there are, I tell you, there are about 400 people listening to you patiently. Uh, thank you very much for your elaborate uh, discussion. Few of the key points that I have jotted down, I will just summarize. Like you said, HIS, 
is daily bread and butter and should be part of seen as an ecosystem for healthcare providers, uh, for admin team, for you know decision support system, and above all, patients and other stakeholders in the healthcare delivery system. Uh, this ecosystem contains uh, you know multiple touch points, like for example, comparing the traditional medical system where we have we used to have family physician. Uh, only single point of contact. Now, healthcare delivery itself become a complex embedded system. So as the requirement of IT management system. Uh, rising incidents, breaches, as we are in digital world, so as the threats and risk has been widened and there are multiple risks uh, in the digital world nowadays. Uh, then denial of service example, you have really put it forth that access to real person who need that service is actually hampered because of these threats and the value of personal health information uh, is is very very uh, important like you said compared to personal data uh, the the phi value is close to us dollar 400 and yes there are frauds upis otps bank calls there are uh, issues and special status of personal health information is indeed uh, important. Uh, info interested parties that you have covered, that is also very important. So we have to, when you, you, you know, uh, you make a information security management framework, you have to take into consideration the interested parties, which could be internal as well as external. And at the same time, you have to understand the need and expectation of each interested parties. That's how you make your uh, robust framework for ISMS. Uh, cycle of energy management, uh, the emergency management, sorry. And you have touched base on proactive risk management. Gone are the days when we are we have to be reactive in nature for every incident, but now we have to be proactive. Now we have we use these terms as failure mode effect analysis. And then, uh, you know, uh, your methodology of uh, risk management, including risk mitigation, prevention and early detection, preparation, seeing the impact, response and recover, which is also very important component for BCP plan, that is business continuity plan, that is also very important. And risk management, five components in terms of governance, risk framework, program development, incident report, response, and the, the, the last one, by design approach. I think this is fantastic. Thank you so much for your uh, uh, presentation. Uh, uh, what I will uh, just, uh, there are two, three questions. One of the question is, I can, uh, you can uh, either Ashokan sir or yourself can uh, explain what measures can be taken to avoid incidents like AIMS or uh, ransom malware incident that we have seen. Uh, what measures can be taken? So Ashokan sir or Kumar sir. Okay. Um... I, I would kind of say that, you know, we'll have to be um, open and be ready for anything to come and then be proactive to manage. One thing that what Kumar alluded is the zero trust model. Make sure you only open those gates which is required and trusted by you. Um, ensure that we have our basic policies and processes are right, like passwords, managing complex passwords, understanding the cycle of passwords in terms of, um, you know, renewing our own passwords, et cetera, and then have an access governance authentication of your uh, you know, various applications that is uh, available across for access in different ecosystem. Manage all of them well, review it thoroughly, ensure that there is no unauthorized access that is coming in. Uh, there are many people who have organizational firewalls, but none of us would uh, you know, uh, take enough importance to review those logs, what is collected by those devices. Every device collects enough amount of logs for us to manage and review. And if we start paying attention to all of those, we would be able to quickly detect the problem rather than 
um, you know, if not, we are not able to prevent, at least we'll be able to quickly detect as and when it occurs. Science of understanding a particular environment is very, very important. If we understand our environment, a classic example, let's say, for example, if you, if you go out of town for a week, what you do, you ensure everything is closed, your windows, your doors, you, know, you, you tell somebody, your neighborhood to watch your home. Right? We have to follow all those similar analogies in the technology world as well. Ensure that when you are not around, tell your uh, colleague to oversee. Make sure there are no new accesses provided without somebody reviewing it thoroughly. And those are some hygiene works that we need to employ. How do we secure our home is what we need to look at. How do we secure our information too? Yeah, And in addition to what uh, Ashokan said, please do take your security awareness uh, you know, trainings. Uh, trainings, attend to your, um, you know, your annual uh, security awareness trainings, be very vigilant. 31% of the uh, security breaches happened because of failure uh, in uh, human controls. Human security is the weakest link in security. So don't be vulnerable. Okay. There is another question uh, by Mr. Guru Prasad. Uh, uh, I would request Mr. Kumar to respond to this. What are the top three vulnerable areas in information security in healthcare which can be breached? I think uh, I would first say humans. Take the people side. Focus on the people side. On the technology side, uh, you know, we we can I can say endpoint area. You know, the endpoint layer, the infrastructure layer, the application layer. We can tell about. Uh, I think look at the people layer. That people layer is when ensure that your people are coached properly on the security and the privacy related, uh, you know, uh, topics. Uh, that is a very very vulnerable area. Uh, and then from a process standpoint, when you design all your process, right, ensure that you ask why should that data even be collected, right? So that makes it vulnerable. So the more the data you collect. Let us, you know, then you add more vulnerability into it, right? So I think the people in the process area, if you focus, leave the technology path to the to the champions that are actually there, and they would make a, you know, they would basically get the job done. But so help us uh, to, uh, you know, to ensure that the people in the process area is actually fixed, um, and look to your left, look to your right, and ensure that you coach your other people too, right? So if that is done, then eighty percent or ninety percent of the problem gets solved. Great. I, I would like to add cooperate with your team when there is a problem or an incident that is detected. Right, 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 sir. Right. So I'll just share my screen uh, as we are coming to the fog end of the. So uh, thank you very much for our both the speakers. And uh, it was indeed a pleasure uh, to have Mr. Ashokan and Mr. Kumar. And they have really navigated. And of course, I am really, really sure that the deliberation have been wonderful uh, experience to understand the information security management system, which I think is, is a new uh, area in healthcare, though uh, a few good uh, organizations have already started the initial steps. Friends, uh, I humbly request all of you to log in, register and log in for tomorrow's webinar in this webinar series, which, in, which is on patient safety plan, a roadmap. We have two eminent speakers, Dr. Sahana, Joint Director, Medical Services, Apollo Hospital, Bangalore, and Dr. Govinda Yatish, Vice President and Unit at Apollo Hospital, JR Nagar. The session will be moderated by our colleague, Regional Quality Head, North Region, Apollo Hospital, Ms. Pritindra Sashteva. Please do join us in large numbers because, you know, as a healthcare provider, we are all uh, stage actors and we are also very vulnerable because now healthcare delivery has become a complex embedded system. So making a patient safety roadmap and making a patient safety framework is also very, very important. So please do join us. Thank you very much. Looking forward to your presence for tomorrow's webinar. Thank you once again, Ashokan sir. And thank you once again, Kumar sir. Thank you, the team. And thank you to all our uh, participants. Looking forward to continuous journey in this webinar series. Thank you so thank much. Thank you and namaste. Namaste and thank you.